Did alleged President Barry Satoro do it on purpose? Did he commit political suicide with this fraud, long-form, alleged birth certificate? Or did somebody set him up for the big fall intentionally? Or did somebody just make a monumentally stupid mistake by not unchecking a certain PDF box when they concocted this hoax? which allowed anybody, even high schoolers, to see that it had multiple layers and was glued together. Barry, of course, is already guilty of using a dead man's social security number, which I believe is a felony all by itself. And now, with the fake birth certificate, proudly released by the White House, we would certainly seem to have two felonies. A lot more laying around if you want to look. Questions, questions, questions. Lots of questions and Well, if the CIA did this, they should be shut down and run out of business immediately. Uh, It's it's bizarre, the whole thing. It's it's so it's so stupid. I don't know where to where to begin or end with it. It's it's going to be the mainstream media, of course, is saying they're they're trying to hold the line saying, well, he releases birth certificates. So the birthers should all take a hike. This is over. It's done. It's finished. Uh Uh-uh. Not at all. Well, you know, they're the prostitutes. They'll say anything. You know, they, they take us to war and, and uh, you know, they're members of the club. Yep. The Ivy League, you know, you've heard me say it. Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. That's the guys. You, 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 look who, you look who they are. Look at look at Obama's spokesperson. His prostitute secretary, his name is James Carney. Carney for Carnival uh, Man. It couldn't be better. It couldn't be better. You no, can't make this stuff up. Nope, nope. You know, we could concentrate on on the on the birth certificate, but just one month ago, Obama took to the stage and announced that unilaterally he was taking the United States into another war. Right. And he said the reasons were that uh, our core interests and those of our allies were at stake. Among other things, <laughs> core interests. Oh, the, the the broccoli crop in Libya. Yeah. You know, it's really vital. And at the same time, today, for example, they just announced that they're going to be, you know, uh, killing, executing the Shia Bahrainians for protesting, and they're claiming they killed some policemen. And mm-hmm. you look at these; these are kids, and and another bunch are being sentenced to jail, uh, but you don't for life. And you don't hear the United States complaining about that. Couldn't be because the Fifth Fleet is parked there now, could it? No, I don't. And then the other big news that really should be the news in front of everybody's eyes as we speak is that history was made yesterday, they said, the prostitutes, that Ben Bernanke, the Fed chairman, had a press conference. Yeah, great. Mm. He has a press conference and the mm. price of gold goes up twenty dollars mm. an ounce and silver over two dollars an ounce. Mm-hmm. That's the big news. The big news is that Empire America is unraveling in front of us. Sure is. I, I was on Russia today today. I mentioned that the business of America is war. Tragically and bus- correct. And the business of China is business. Yeah. Look at the difference. Business. Look at the balance sheet. Yep, yep. They have, by the way, the Chinese economy outperformed the U.S. economy by two hundred billion dollars last year formally, and the projection that China would surpass America within the next two years has already been met now and surpassed. That they are the world's premier economy. The business of war. Let's just call it what it is, uh, folks. It's the business of killing for money. And the orders now literally have been given to kill Muammar Gaddafi, not to mention all the civilians, the innocents in Libya. The NATO people have been tasked by so-called Western leaders to kill him. This is imperial murder. This is an obscenity. Yes, and, and, and what we see now, of course, it's not only the military-industrial complex, it's the military-intelligence complex. It's the same game. I mean, the CIA has now has its own fleet of aircraft called drones, and uh, 
And you keep looking around, and they have their mercenaries around the world doing their thing. You know, there's a quote. I don't know, and maybe some of the listeners, because I've been trying to find the truth of it, but it was it was printed in the World Socialist website. And by the way, they do great. They, they do great reporting. They always get down to the end. You know, if the workers of the world were in charge, everything would be okay. You know, right, right. that's right. You kind of lose it at that point. Yeah, but they you know, do good work. But uh, they, they do, do great work. Yeah. They their writing is among the best I've seen. And they have a quote in from uh, yesterday's piece on um, on the CIA. And the quote is: "It was Harry Truman who, in retirement, commented, quote." I never would have agreed to the formulation of the Central Intelligence Agency back in 47 if I had known it would become the American Gestapo. Wow. Yeah. Because that's what it's become. And there's no question about it. But as you've heard me say, it's fascism. Fascism has come to America. Yeah. Well, it's... uh... It's a tragedy, no matter how you slice it or what you label it, and it's our fault. We let this happen. We sat on our butts for decades, watched the TV. We lost the ability to get up and make serious differences in our culture and our society. Uh, We began then to say, oh, gee, we can send an email to our congressman, Uh, not realizing, of course, at least most of the people didn't. I think they're catching on now that there's a delete key on the other end. It's it's absurd. Uh, We have. Go ahead. No, no, I I tell people there's three things you should not do. Sign a petition, send a letter to a congressman, or call your senator. Grow up. This is kitty stuff. And it's not the way you do it. Good for you. I don't get involved, by the way, in local groups or environmental groups, because you get a bunch of people that don't know how to do it, that want to do it their way, and and it just fails. And when we talk about the first great war, put the pieces together. The crash of 29, the Great Depression, the panic of 08, the greatest recession, the only reason we're not in the Depression is because of the digital money not worth the trillions of dollars of paper it's not printed on. And then you look at the currency wars back then, Voila, we are in them now. Trade wars to follow. Hot wars are next. When the bailout bubble bursts, the next, the last thing they will do is take you to war when all else fails. And that's what they're doing. They always do. Every time. 